Hello Tanner, and welcome to episode 32, How a Steam Locomotive Works. Let's take a look at the major parts of a steam locomotive. This part here, with the windows, is the cab. The cab is where the crew of the locomotive work. The crew consists of two men, an engineer who drives the train, and a fireman who tends to the fire. Directly in front of the cab is the boiler. The boiler has three main parts. Right in front of the cab is the firebox, and the firebox is where the fire is, and it heats the water in the center part of the boiler here. And in the very front of the boiler is the smoke box. The smoke box acts as a sort of filter to keep sparks and hot ashes from flying out of the smokestack and lighting the trees and fields on fire as the locomotive passes. The wheels underneath of the locomotive are grouped into three different types. The small pilot wheels in the front. Their job was to guide the locomotive in the turns and keep it from derailing. In the middle are the large drive wheels. Now some locomotives had drive wheels that were over six feet tall. And in the back here are the trailing wheels. They help support some of the weight as well. Now behind the locomotive is the tender. The tender is a special car pulled by the locomotive that carries extra water and the fuel such as wood, coal, or oil. Now this dome here on top of the boiler is called the steam dome. The steam dome is where the steam was collected from the boiler and sent to the two cylinders on each side of the locomotive. If we could look inside of the locomotive, we would see the firebox here with the fire in it. The heat and smoke from the fire traveled through dozens of pipes surrounded by water through the smoke box and out of the smoke stack. Here's a picture of what the firebox and the pipes would look like if you cut away the sides of the locomotive. The heat traveling through the pipes heats up the water in the boiler, turning some of that water into steam. The steam, which is under a lot of pressure, is collected at the top of the boiler in the steam dome. The steam then travels down a large pipe on each side and into two cylinders, one on each side of the locomotive. Inside the cylinder, the steam pushes on a piston, which is attached to a heavy connecting rod. That rod goes back and forth and makes the drive wheels spin. Now the cylinders is where the real work was done. So let's take a closer look at what's going on inside the cylinders. Each cylinder has two chambers. The top chamber contains a valve, and the bottom chamber contains the piston. The valve in the top chamber slides forward and backwards and allows the steam from the large pipe on the top to enter into the bottom chamber either in the front of the piston or in the back of the piston. Let's open up the throttle and see what happens. In this position, the valve allows steam to enter into the front of the piston. The force of the steam pushes the piston back. The piston drives the connecting rod backwards and the wheels turn halfway around. At this point the steam in the bottom chamber is used up. The valve in the top chamber has also moved and now it allows fresh steam to enter in behind the piston. It also opens up a way for the old steam to escape. The escaping steam is what makes the chugging sound. This fresh charge of steam pushes the piston forward, which pulls the connecting rod forward as well, and the wheels make another half turn. Now we're back to where we started. The valve, again in the forward position, allows fresh steam to enter and the old steam to escape. And so it goes, back and forth, the drive wheels making a half turn every time the piston is pushed each way. Steam locomotives were so powerful, they could take a train weighing several thousand tons from a dead stop to over a hundred miles an hour. And you will notice that there are no gears here, like in a transmission of a modern vehicle. A steam locomotive doesn't need them. 